Good afternoon. I'm out in the garden today and I get to plant a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I've got some great basils to put in. I've got some uh, sorrel. I've got some uh, uh, I've got eucalyptus that I get to put in. Um, and then also I'm gonna be going into the food forest and I'm gonna be planting sweet potatoes, which I honestly think might be one of the food forest's best friends uh, as far as having a, a heavy crop producer that's an annual as you're waiting for the rest of your perennial uh, ground cover to fill in because sweet potatoes grow very quickly. They do a great job of ground cover and they also are beautiful. In the meantime, they're also building up these beautiful uh, tubers under the ground that are edible and delicious and super healthy. And we may be a potato family, but sweet potatoes are much healthier for you. And so we are a very happy sweet potato family as well. And Honestly, I think that my girls like sweet potatoes better than they like regular potatoes. So I don't know where they got that from, but they do. And so we like to make French fries out of them. We like to have baked sweet potato. We like to have that put into like our, our soups and our, and our chilies and stuff like that. And I'm just a big fan of it, even though the white and the purple potatoes are my favorite. Um, so I'm gonna be planting those, and those are a little bit different than um, regular potatoes that you plant. So I'd love to show you how I do that, what it looks like to put it in, and, and what the process is for planting these sweet potatoes, as well as some other fun things that I get to put into my garden, like the eucalyptus. I love silver drop eucalyptus, um, and I use it a lot in my medicines uh, for aromatherapy in the house we hang it in our shower sometimes to get that that steam smell while you're doing a shower it's very spa like um, and so I like to plant a lot of it because you can get it at the nursery for like a dollar 99 for like a little tiny pot of it and it grows into like this big bushy situation uh, even though it is only an annual in this area so I put that in and last year I only planted three plants. This year I'm gonna plant five or six. I'm not exactly sure how many I got. I think I got six because we used it up. We're, we're, it's all gone and we used it up pretty quickly because we just love eucalyptus so much. So uh, that's what we're doing today and I hope you join me. Oh, it is so hot. It is so hot and that's great. I mean, this is great pepper growing and tomato growing and eggplant growing weather like this is really good stuff except for it hasn't rained in like two weeks or even more at this point and and I don't mind working in the rain I love working in the rain I would rather work in the rain and know that my my plants are getting nourished and fed and watered and that they're getting healthy but it has not and so I've been watering the garden more than I've ever watered the garden before uh, because things it's just hot and it's dry and I don't know when this next rain is going to come but it's supposed to happen today I mean it says 100% chance of rain but it says 100% chance of rain like right now and I don't know if you guys <laughs> see that beautiful sky <laughs> that is blue and not dense with rain clouds and so I'm wondering if this is the boy who cried wolf again for us because they definitely said that we were supposed to get rain earlier in the past couple of weeks and that did not happen and so if you guys are seeing this do a prayer that we get some rain please because oh we need it we need it a lot okay so i have my my five eucalyptus plants i got five and so i guess my idea was i'm gonna do four corners and then one in the middle and that's how i'm gonna plant them out but some of these are kind of little, some of them are a little bit bigger, um, but they fill out quite bushily. Bushy, bushy like, more bushy. They, they turn into a bush. I don't, I don't know. They, they fill out a lot <laughs> and they get to be about like this big and the strands just kind of, kind of stretch out. And so 
Uh, I'm going to give them a little bit of space. And in this bed up here, I've got my Roman chamomile. I have some vervain, the official type, not the blue, ver blue vervain. We've got um, the official vervain. And then I've got um, some parsley, I guess, growing, which is really exciting. And uh, this is where we've got astragalus, bone set, um, Joe pie weed, and then some uh, asparagus growing in this bed. But there's this big center area that has nothing going on. And so I'm going to put the eucalyptus here. I think I'm going to put my tomatillo here. And, and I think that's it for right now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up, huh, I might even put, I think I might end up planting mostly beets in this area as well because beets, we really like beets a lot and my beet bed that is growing over there uh, is a little bit smaller than I'd like it to be so I need some more room. But there's more room opening up in this garden than I originally anticipated and uh, I think I think I overestimated how much room each plant takes. So I'm going to be able to pack a lot more food into this garden, which I'm really excited about, and some herbs. But right now, I can't get distracted. I got to do the eucalyptus. Okay, so I'm going to, I mean, they're very simple. You just take them out and you plant them right up to where the soil, uh, the soil level is uh, already in the pot. And I like to give them about a foot and a half between so that they have room to really do their bushy thing. <laughs> what is that word? I can't think of the word. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna do it now. <laughs> I got the tomatillos in and I got the silver drop eucalyptus in and that's just gonna that's gonna fill out really beautifully I'm very excited about that and here they are one two three four there's a nasturtium right in the middle which is nice there's a marigold growing right there one two three four five of the eucalyptus the cherries are starting to come up it's so exciting in <laughs> my husband's home <laughs> Turning flush. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. Brussels sprouts and the cabbage underneath the little cover that we got are looking wonderful. Here are the cabbage. Looking beautiful and green. Okay, so I'm in the food forest next to these gorgeous flowers in my floor, flower border here. And I've got some of the sweet potatoes. And my mother-in-law is so graciously helping me today. Uh, she's getting in the um, George Vardaman, I think. And I am doing the Georgia Jet. And so uh, they come in this wrapped up because it's roots we're we're planting uh starts like like when you sprout a potato those sprouts that come off uh when you plant sweet potatoes really all you do is you plant the sprouts you don't plant the sweet potato and so these are the sprouts and you can get your own sprouts easily by sticking a um a sweet potato in water in like january 
uh, and, and having it half in and half out of water and just keeping the water fresh and you can get your own sprouts that way easily. I did not do that this year. I was not thinking about that in January. I should have been, but I did not. And so I'm going to open up these roots and take the newspaper off so that I can get ready to plant them. Uh, but the thing is, you, you got to keep the roots damp. And so what, uh, what the nursery sells them in when I, when I buy them from the, from Millmont Nursery is the, uh, they have little tubs where there's water and they just have these, these root balls, uh, grouped together in the water. And so when you bring it home, it's important that you either plant them right away or you continue to keep them in the water until it's time to plant them because um, if you let these roots dry out, they're not gonna do very much for you and it's not gonna be a very good, uh, happy plant for you. And, um, this is what it looks like right there. And it's got a lot of beautiful roots sticking out from it. And they sprawl, they sprawl quite a lot. There's a wonderful, do you see the butterfly? He's just hanging out with me. I love being in the food forest. So you really want to make sure that you kind of give them some space. Like you can't, well, you shouldn't plant them right next to each other. Um, I give them about two or three feet uh, in between. But here's one of the roots and there's some little uh, leaves on top. And again, I'm using this as my, my ground cover for the areas where maybe the strawberries haven't filled in yet or the cranberries and I'm gonna just kind of spread them out everywhere. Oh, it's the sound of the beginning of a very good, steady rain. And this kiwi vine is like the perfect color cover. But I'm so excited about this. I may just go dance in the rain because finally it's raining. And I have two more things that I need to plant, so I'm gonna have some time to enjoy this. I have some Rumex. Let me actually get this. I have some Rumex, which is apparently really good for raspberry dressing. I, I don't know, I get, know that I've got raspberries. So if I'm gonna make that, I guess I need this. Okay, so I got it because it's really pretty and it's a perennial. So the lady said to me, and then I also got the tricolor sage because is that not gorgeous or what? And sage is basically the perfect companion plant for everything in the garden. So I like to have some sage almost everywhere. And so it gives me an opportunity to kind of be a collector of sage. So I get to find somewhere wonderful to put this. And I want to put it where there isn't sage already. So. This is what they call intuitive gardening. Basically the only thing that I do in the food forest. So I have sage right there and right there. 
I have sage right here. That's my scarlet sage. But I do not have any sage over here. So I think I'm going to put my sage over here. Got to be careful I don't work on the new sweet potatoes, the new tomatoes. Yeah, I put some tomatoes in my food forest because last year the tomatoes that were in the food forest did better than the ones that were in the garden. And the peanuts. I've got peanuts growing. I planted them in the food forest and then just recently planted some in the garden. And because the garden has like super sandy soil and that's kind of perfect. Yeah, this is a great place for the sage. But the peanuts that I planted in here in the food forest are finally popping up and they look super cool. Let me show you a close up of one of the, the peanut plants. And they look like peas because they're a legume, right? There we go. Talk about multifunctional, producing delicious peanuts, as well as creating some nitrogen in the soil. Beautiful. Now this is not beautiful. This is a true heaven, and I don't want that in here. And I also could take this away too. <clears throat> The secret to keeping a weed-free garden is to weed as you go. So here's peanut, here's peanut, there's peanut, here's peanut, there's peanut. I planted it literally everywhere. So, uh, the water is dropping the petals from the poppy. How beautiful are they? I'm in love with poppies. Okay, coming back for my last plant, my Rumix, and this is just so pretty. I want to put this somewhere that it'll shine. How tall does this get? Okay, so this gets to be about 10 to 12 inches and it's just beautiful so I kind of want to have it up front or somewhere where it can kind of stand out a little bit. I'll put it over here next to my Uva Ursi or my Bearberry. Okay. Oh my goodness, I love this rain so much. Look at the wiggly worm. Look at this guy. Oh, I'll put him near the Rumex. If he wants to dive in there and feed it a little bit with his poop, that's great. Okay. So the comfrey that I cut the other day is wilted. Starting to feed the soil. It's wonderful. This is feeding everything right now. And I figured out what this tree is. I figured it out. This is a plum. And I'm getting one baby plum off of it. I, I could be getting more and I just can't see them. But let me show you the one. And there it is. So exciting. I could not be in a better mood right now. My husband just came home which means I have the whole weekend ahead with him. It's my daughter's birthday party on Sunday. I get to go to a friend's birthday tomorrow. Did I mention it's Friday? <laughs> and it's raining. I got all the plants planted that I wanted to plant today. And there was a few more seedlings of like watermelon and cantaloupe and stuff like that that I wanted to get in because I think the seeds that I had direct seeded got eaten by the voles, of course. Uh, I'm gonna do a castor oil spray on the whole garden very soon. I just gotta find that, um, there's a, a, a fixture that goes on the spray mix bottle that goes on the end of the hose. I can't find the little, the little tube that goes down into the straw, so it's really important. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it one more time. I asked in an earlier video if anybody knows what this plant is. Please, maybe other people, different people are watching this video. Tell me what this plant is, because I remember planting it thinking this is gonna be gorgeous. And I put it in the very center of my food forest, but I have no idea what it is anymore. And I can't remember if I said I'll put it here just because it's gorgeous and it'll be a focal point, or if there's a food aspect to it. I just don't know, but it started flowering this year. So that might help. And then there's, it looks like maybe berries on it, or it could just be seed pods. I'm not sure. So this is the beautiful bushy plant. There are the flowers. And then you can kind of see the berry like seed pods. I don't know on there. And it's beautiful. And it's about three or four feet high. I just don't know what it is. So if you know, please tell me, because <laughs> I forgot to label this one. Okay, so I got the sweet potatoes planted. There's peanuts coming up everywhere. The, uh, the four o'clocks are finally coming up that I planted from seed. And the nasturtiums that I planted from seed are coming up as well as the seedlings that I planted, they're doing really well. So there's gonna be an incredible amount of ground cover covering the ground uh, rapidly uh, very soon because of all these low growing, spreading, sprawling things that I've got going on. So let me do a pan of the garden real quick because you're gonna see all this, this ground that you can see the mulch is gonna be covered very soon. Also, how wonderful to see the food forest in the rain. So all that mulch that you see is gonna end up getting covered with wonderful food. And there are watermelons now in here, so that's gonna sprawl out. I put watermelons up there, they're gonna sprawl out. There's squash or zucchini, yellow squash, and then watermelons up there. Corn's coming up in between. Oh, everything is doing what it should. Look at the bottom of those strings over there. You can see the cucumbers coming up. Oh, it's so exciting. The hollyhocks. These hollyhocks are gonna have black flowers. They're getting ready to bloom. I've got some here. I've got some right there. I'm thinking that I've got a couple over there, but they might have been overtaken by the moonwort. And only the start of the poppies is here. There's so many more poppies getting ready to pop. I mean, look at this one just opened up, but there's all these, all those things right there. There's poppies. There's some poppies inside. Dang, vol ate those poppies. There's a bunch of vol, a bunch of vol, well, yes, I'm sure there are a bunch of vol, a bunch of poppies over there. Anyway, I am just delighted. So guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you can get sweet potatoes, do it because they are gorgeous. I can't wait for you to see what they look like when they're spreading out. I mean, the, a lot of people, there are decorative sweet potatoes that don't create the potato part or the, the tuber part uh, as much that people use as decorative in a lot of things because it's just beautiful. So um, if you get a chance to get sweet potatoes, even the ones with the tubers will be absolutely gorgeous. They're just wonderful. Uh, they do take a certain amount of time to get those tubers the right size. So you might wanna see you know, what variety you wanna get if you do that. And they are kind of expensive sometimes if you order them online, like I think it was like 30 some dollars in order to get a um, like 12 or 15 starts of them. But uh, if you go to your local nursery, you might find some there. The ones that I had, they were like, there's probably 20 in the bunch and it was $10 per bunch. So that's a much better deal. Or next January, you can start them yourself by, you know, getting that sweet potato and putting some toothpicks in it, you know, and, and resting it in a cup of water only halfway. I'm gonna call it a day, guys. I'm gonna go cuddle with my husband because I am so excited he's home. <sighs> Happy.
have a wonderful day. If you could hit that like button and the subscribe, that would help me out a lot. Also, the notification bell right there and click that. It's a little bell. That would help me out a lot too. Have a wonderful day and stay blessed. Thank you.